Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and today I'm gonna talk about all the new and future updates in the outgoing CSGO and the upcoming CS2. So let's start with the most obvious one. The developers have finally added the ability to inspect grenades at the press of a button. It works exactly the same way as knives, there is one basic animation and a rare one. When your character does all kinds of tricks with tossing a frag grenade or some weird shakes of an incendiary. The animations themselves probably don't mean anything. But it's important to note that before adding full-fledged support for skins on Zeus with the release of CS2 the developers added a possibility of inspecting it. And if you've seen my previous video you are probably already aware of the fact that inactive equipment and grenade slots in the loadout interface have absolutely identical code to the slots for weapons agents, gloves, knives, music kits and other cosmetics. Therefore, the items in these slots can be replaced by dragging and dropping with other items from your inventory. Then again, the question remains. Will these be new types of grenades, such as the tripwire that we have already found in the files? Or will it be skins on grenades, like the multicolored smokes that we also found in the files? Honestly, right now I'm thinking that the grenade skins don't make any sense. After all, it's not a proper weapon that you'll be using for the whole round. It's a one-time item that you hold for a few seconds and literally throw away. But at the same time, Zeus, also a single-shot weapon, is rarely used in competitive. And if the developers decided to make skins for it, then why not try the same for grenades? It is worth mentioning that 6 years ago the developers have already experimented with grenade skins and new types of grenades. At that time a grenade called Sonic Smoke appeared in the game's files. But the strangest part is that this grenade had all the existing music kits somehow connected with it. It's still not very clear how it was supposed to work, but according to the speculation from the community it could be a different kind of smoke grenade which upon activation silences all the sounds around it and plays the music from the selected kit instead. But what we will end up seeing in the new game is still a mystery. Get 5 free bucks for just trading your CSGO items on Skins Monkey. Simply select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and trade your old and rusty items to something more new and shiny. If you can't find something suitable for selected price, it will automatically add the leftover to your balance. Skins Monkey runs giveaways every day, week and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Here you can easily preview desired weapons and if you need any particular item you can always use the advanced feature filters in the middle. If you want any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Use code Gaben and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. In addition to the grenade stuff, the first type of customization on Legends has also appeared. Almost all the characters in the Elite faction wear glasses and in this update appeared a mysterious customization folder which contains the material for the mountain glasses. At the moment all the glass materials for all the agents in the Elite faction are baked into each agent's head separately. And here definitely a preparation for some kind of modular system in the future. The most obvious assumption is that they could make the color of the glass optional and you'd be able to choose from several variants. Developers have been working on different character customization options for a while, all the way up to full body parts and clothing, which I talked about in one of my last videos. So they could start with something smaller like colors for glasses or skins for shoes and end up with Star Trek Adidas sweatpants. Speaking of weird updates, for the first time in the Counter-Strike files appeared I material with the brown pupil. At the moment all eyes in the game are a static part of the character's head meshes. In other words, all agents' eyeballs are a creepy and static imitation of what real eyes should look like. In all Valve games starting with the second Half-Life, the eyes are a separate moving element of all live characters. And the appearance of this feature in CS2 may hint at the addition of full-fledged story cutscenes in future operations or better and more detailed agents.
And good news for those who can choose a favorite skin on a particular weapon. The developers are working on a system of favorite skins, where you can add weapons to the favorites category. And instead of choosing one skin in one slot, you can select the entire group of favorites at once. At the moment the system doesn't fully work, but I have a feeling that it'll be similar to Shuffle from CSGO, just a little bit more selective. If we unlock the hidden shaders, we can see that the developers are already preparing to support Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 upscaling, or simply put, FSR 2. At the moment the new Counter-Strike only supports the first version, and it's worse than FSR 2 in absolutely everything. Even at ultra quality you'll have much lower FPS and much worse image output. FSR 2 is already supported in another popular Valve game which runs on the same Source 2 engine. This upscaling works on Nvidia graphics cards as well, so all users with weak computers will benefit from it. And as a last proof, Counter-Strike 2 is mentioned on the waiting list for this technology on the official AMD website. As I suggested in the last video, the new map in the limited beta was in fact Nuke, but the developers broke the pattern and also added Office. It is important to note that along with the Office the developers also added both Casual Mode and Hostage Mode. So we can assume that with each next update we will see more and more content, so they will try to release the game this summer. In the last update there were hints that the developers were preparing a training mode and various tips for beginners. As a little practice, newbies will be invited to play a competitive game against bots, during which tutorial tips will appear. In addition, the developers are still working on porting Danger Zone to Source 2. And along with the mentions in code, we already have new shaders and in game entities. Of course, it's not the highest priority, but it would be just silly to not use all the advantages of the new engine for some major update in this game mode. I honestly hope that Danger Zone will get proper attention from the community in Counter-Strike 2, because previously this game mode suffered a lot due to the limitations of old engine. Going back to the topic of maps, surely I can release a separate hour long video say about new PBR textures or run around and leak every visual improvement, but I won't do that. As you can see for yourself that everything looks really nice and beautiful. I'm particularly pleased with the new shader and particles for the glass, which is extremely pleasant to break and the ability to barricade yourself with the vending machines on office. And let's finally discuss the leaked screenshots of the Inferno remake. Every time the developers compile a map at maximum settings, it automatically generates several screenshots which are used on the loading screens. And these screenshots are the ones that appeared with the big update. Despite the fact that the main part of the locations have been already done and likely to remain as is, it should be noted that this is not the final version and most likely the developers will continue to make small changes. Judging by the screenshots, the map lacks color correction, post-processing and 3D skybox with buildings. So the overall map vibe may significantly change closer to the release. Unfortunately, just the day after the update, the developers changed the logic behind the generation of these screenshots and removed all the files that shouldn't be in the public version of the game. So this is the first and last time when we got screenshots of the future map in such good quality. Speaking of leaks, in the last video I told you about how the developers left an early prototype of the Mirage remake in the game's files. Thanks to the fact that they used assets from Half-Life Alex, a good friend of mine John Freeman managed to recreate almost the original version of what it was supposed to look like. And even looking at my version with the great dev textures from the last video, it was clear that the developers were aiming for the Eastern Europe. However, after putting all the necessary assets in place, it's obvious that they wanted to recreate the vibe from the Half-Life universe. It's important to note that this piece of map was compiled back in 2021 and is most likely just a visual experiment. So it's not a fact that a future Mirage remake will look exactly like this. Especially considering that the developers of Counter-Strike 2 are trying to make all the locations as bright as possible, and this part is pretty dark. Unfortunately, over the entire lifetime of CSGO, the development of any mods has become more and more complicated. Developers have purposely shut down any opportunities to modify the game, as unfair players have used them in order to gain advantages and create cheats. However, based on the findings in this update, we can assume that this situation may be about to end. For several years, in various Valve games on Source 2, there have been strings mentioning something called Pulse. 
Some people thought it was a new game, some thought it was some kind of AI system for bots, but in fact it turned out to be something much, much better. Pulse is Valve's analog of the blueprint system from the Unreal Engine. So it's a separate tool for visual node-based programming that utilizes two languages, TypeScript and JavaScript, both versions 8. Someone from the Counter-Strike developers called it vScript 2 for an unknown reason, but in fact there is nothing really left of vScript script from CSGO besides the name. At this point the developers are already using the system for the in-game logic and all scripts have .vts, .vgs and .vpulse extensions. But most importantly they have started to recreate the most basic game modes based on this tool, like Wingman. And there are already entities with .vpulse files on the new new. Visually, it could look identical to another official Valve tool called Anim Graph, since Pulse can use similar graphic libraries for rendering node elements. If the developers get everything right, we can expect a real reborn of modding in Counter-Strike, as custom game modes in Dota 2 are attracting millions of users who don't play official matchmaking at all. Leave a comment with a meat emoji if you watched this far and check out my previous video where I talk about new weapons and Mirage remake. Увидимся!